Alright, Shalom. I first want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Double honors to the Apostles and Elders, but most of the world. Blessings to the elect and the rest of the Israelites who are scattered worldwide who are predestined to be saved, man. I'll come here for a quick lesson. Won't be too long. Um, you know, as I said, my last lesson, I'm in the hospital at the moment, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been here since today's Saturday. Oh, gosh. Excuse me. And uh, I've been here since last Saturday. It's been a week now, and uh, I've I basically pulled a muscle, uh, my core muscle on the left, which is like in between your, you know, where your thigh is, going all the way down to the knee, and it's excruciatingly, excruciatingly painful, hard to mobilize, hard to lie down, it's easier to sit down than to lie down, that's all. <laughs> That's how painful it is, man. And, and then I had uh, sickle cell pain, sickle cell crisis in, this, in the abdomen, which is which is settled down now. I thank God for that, you know what I mean? And uh, But it's still very painful. And uh, yesterday, didn't have a good night. I find it hard to sleep in this place. You know, hard to mobilise. So... Um, I thought, let me do a lesson, and um, um, I had a neighbour next to me, he's left now, he left yesterday, but he was uh, uh, an Israelite as well, and um, and it was a very spiritual experience, because uh, he came in a day after I came in, and um, he's basically been, not to put too much of his medical history out there, but um, he's had a stroke. He's had um, a, um, epilepsy. He's been in a coma for three to four months. Um, he's had cancer. Through the cancer, he's had like chemotherapy, and he's lost his melanin as well. So he looks like a, you know, like a. Not to disrespect him, but you know, like albino kind of thing, you know, and it's and it's and it's patchy, so you can still see, you know, the brown pigment, his original pigment, but he's lost a lot of his pigment, mainly, you know, which shows you that Michael Jackson <laughs> was a a lion demon, saying that he has vitiligo, you know, no, you bleach your skin because if you had vitiligo, it'll be all patchy like him, you know. Um, he lost his woman. He had to raise two kids on his own. He's, he's in a wheelchair. Um, and one of the first things he said to me is that he has a friend, a good friend, because, I, I, you know, I, I said, I hope you get better soon, because when he came in, he was in a bad way. And I said to him, um, I have sickle cell, and he said one of his best friends has got sickle cell. You know? And he said that, and then literally the next day, his, one of his best friends, that same guy that he told me about, came in to see him. And I recognized his best friend. His best friend used to go to a hospital I used to go to, you know. And I recognized him. I couldn't remember his name, but then, you know, he told me his name. So this is all spiritual, man, you know. And one of my good friends with Sickle Cell knows him very well. I mean, it was incredible, you know. It's not a coincidence at all. Um, so when we were talking about the Bible and, uh, and uh, you know, a couple of the brothers came to visit me, which I really appreciate. And they even spoke to him as well, um, especially the brother Ahab in particular, in depth. You know, it was, it was almost like a, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was like a campfire meeting, you know. And he actually told us about when he was in that coma. Because I've been into two co in, induced comas, and when you come out of them, because of the drugs and and um, you know the nature of you, you know being sedated, you have wild dreams, man. And he told us about his dream, and his dream was wild, man. You know, and um, he said that it was one of the, 
many times, one of the first times that he felt like he could offload, you know, fully his dream while he was in that coma. Be and, I, I, and I guess because I've had two episodes as well. And the first episode I had, I woke up and I thought the dream I had while I was in that coma was real, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was really deep stuff, so. And he, he mentioned that some of his friends and family talk about Job and compare him to Job because, and he said, I can't, he can't compare. You know, he's humble, he's like, listen, you can't say that. You know, Job was a man of the Lord, you know what I mean, this, that, and the other. But they say that because he's lost, you know, the, the brown pigment in his skin. You know, because of the complications of the stuff he's been through. You know? So I was explaining to him about, um, you know, us being Israelites and stuff. And he was receiving it. And I didn't want to beat too much into him too quickly. But I did say to him, I said, look. Because he was saying, why has this happened to me? And I just felt compelled to say, listen, man. You know? Because he was receiving the, you know, you know, the fact that we're Israelites and stuff. And I said, look, one of the mysteries of the Bible is reincarnation, man. And we pay for what we do in this life, in our past life. You know? So uh, it was deep, man. And um, he mentioned the book of Job, so I want to go into that. Because everything is a test. Punishment, and punishment is a test, really. You know? Yahweh was tested. You know? He was King Solomon. He went off. And he came back as your house shy, man. And and he had to, you know, die for this nation. And also the things that he did as Solomon because he went off Solomon, you know, um, uh, worshipping different gods. Okay. And that's what you're not going to get from the uh, wacky, the wacky tacky Christian church. You're not going to get any kind of um, spiritual edification when it comes to these matters. Okay. So we're going to go to Job chapter 2 verse 1, all right? All right. Again, there was a day when the and this is it and this is in the heavens, all right? This is in the spiritual realm. Okay? Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now, it says the sons of God, right? And many people think that when they see the, the um, phrase sons of God in this chapter or in Genesis, it's talking about angels and uh, uh, um, angels, uh, uh, fallen angels, they fell down and they mated, you know, with... Uh, uh, you know, the w doors on the earth and they made hybrid beings. The fallen angel doctrine, which is false. All right. All right. We all have bodies on this earth. And the word body is just... Um, the word body is just... A, uh, your body is just a house for a spirit. All right. There's a, th there's a professor in America who said that when people die and they're pronounced dead 21 grams lighter they are instantly and that you know and, and it's scientifically proven you know why that's your spirit leaving your body all right because your spirit goes back to the heavenly father okay so there's a chosen line and that chosen line is us man all right the israelites man okay all right, we are the old, we are supposed to be anyway the obedient ones to Yahweh Bashim Yao Shai. All right, and we have bodies down here on the earth, and we have bodies in the heavens, man. Okay, so this chapter here, when it says Job 2 and 1, all right, when the sons of God present themselves, all right, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. That was a, a spiritual meeting in the heavens because we have a spiritual body in the heavens. All right, let me prove that. Okay, let's see now. This is First Corinthians 15 and 14. All right, 
there are also celestial bodies all right and bodies terrestrial all right but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another okay and celestial bodies are bodies that are in the heavens okay celestial bodies man right now we, we we're down here on earth we have a terrestrial body all right but there are celestial bodies all right and those are bodies that are in the heavens man all right so when someone dies they, they, their spirit goes back to god and everyone has a spiritual body in the heavens all right but the israelites who are the chosen of god we uh, have bodies in the heavens all right and that's known as what the sons of god man all right because everything is about obedience to the heavenly father all right we are supposed to be those uh, obedient ones to the heavenly father and and you know from from adam you know um, uh, through his lineage all right as as you know through the scriptures you know we had a a a way all right that god commanded us to walk in and we fell from that way all right so that fallen angel doctrine is madness okay there's no such thing as uh, uh, uh angels coming down <laughs> and 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 mating and 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 having hybrid beings and 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 giants and this that and the other okay all right now we can put that First Corinthians fifteen. Let's put that. All right, First Corinthians. I'll put that on the Bible blue letter. Blue letter Bible. No. Because there's some Israelite groups that are actually teaching this madness, man. You know. And if you're not in the right spirit, and it's up to the Lord whether He reveals these things to you, because He He controls people, okay? You know, it will be easy to believe that, man. You know, because there are actually Israelite groups that are teaching this madness, okay? Don't make any sense. All right, let's go there. So, so First Corinthians. 15 there are also celestial bodies so let's see all right there are also celestial bodies let's look at celestial all right let's see what comes up okay there you go all right and the word there is what let me go back to the different view All right, that's the word there. Strong's G, 2032. Epuranias. 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 Which means what? Existing, see look, you go down there, outline of Bible usage, existing in heaven. Things that take place in heaven. The heavenly regions, you see? So we all have a, um, a celestial body. Which is in the heavens, you know, and the sons of God represent the Israelites, man. All right, the chosen line, all right, that is in the heavens. So when you go to Job 2 and 1, and it says that, you know, um, there was a meeting, the sons of God, that's us, man. That's the chosen uh, 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 line, the, it, that was a meeting in the heavens, okay? All right. But what does it also prove? It it also proves that um, Satan is a minister. All right? He serves the Heavenly Father. Satan is on the left, and Yahushai and the angels on the right. Okay? So let's go back to it. And again, there was a day when the sons of God, all right? Remember, this is a meeting in the heavens. The sons of God, celestial bodies came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord see so the people that think that Satan is against God it's madness alright they just lack the correct understanding alright um, 
Job chapter 2 verse 2 And the Lord said unto Satan Alright From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord And said From going to and fro in the earth And walking up and down In it Alright Verse 3 And the Lord said unto Satan Has thou considered my servant Job? So the Lord said Have you considered Job? All right, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And the word escheweth means to stay away from. All right, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. So the Lord is basically saying, Look, you know. All right, he's giving Satan permission to cause holy hell on Job. All right, verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man have will he give for his life. All right. Verse 5. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone. Oops, so like yes, gone up. And touch his bone and his flesh. And he will curse thee to thy face. So Satan's basically saying, listen, you know, if you allow me to go loose on him, he's going to turn against you, you know, and going to curse you to, to his face, you know. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So God, Yahweh, all right, the supreme Yahweh, Gave Satan permission to muck Job up. Alright. Okay. But don't kill him. And Job lost a lot. You know, he lost family, cattle, friends. You know. His wife said, uh, 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 you know, um, curse the Lord and die. You know. And up to that episode, he probably thought that he had a damn good wife. You know. He probably thought that his wife was a, 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 you know, a great woman. But he went for all that hell, you know. And um, her answer was curse the Lord and die, you know. So basically turn to God and say, damn you, and then kill yourself, you know. And that, and that's a, um, that shows you the, the difference between um, the logic of a man and logic of a woman. All right, um, Job thirty nine seventeen. The Lord deprived her of wisdom. Okay, so sometimes when you're going through the stuff like myself and my neighbor, um, you know, that left yesterday, you know, and I thought I've been through hell, but he's been through hell and he's still going through hell, man. You know, he's going through a lot of hell. He couldn't couldn't do much himself, man. You know, so. Um, you have to understand that the Lord put this in the scriptures for a reason, man. Okay? So we can learn from this, the, these situations. Okay? Alright? Now, I'm going to get a scripture here. Alright? That proves that. Because the spirit, the right spirit of the scriptures, alright? The right spirit of the scriptures, all right, is supposed to comfort us. And hopefully anyone that's going through, uh, you know, these similar things, it will comfort you as well. Because I'm not going to lie to you, this is the pain I was in. Oh, it was excruciating. It wasn't nice, you know. And uh, I really hope that tonight I can sleep. Because your body heals when you sleep. And I haven't been able to get a good, good night's sleep in this place. So that's why I said to the doctors today, I said, look, you know, um, tomorrow, you know, we'll load the medication and then, um, but can you give me something to help me sleep tonight? You know, see how it goes. And then uh, hopefully a couple of days more, then I'll go home because I need to sleep, man. And, I, and it's hard to sleep here. 
especially, but um, this injury I have makes it hard to lie down. So it's a tricky thing. But the Lord puts these things upon you, you know? And it's a test, man, you know? It's a test. You know, like a marriage, you know, like when, when you have a marriage and, uh, you know, like you have the wedding vows. It says, uh, um, death do us part and all this stuff, sickness and health, you know? It happens. And people say those vows, but when it comes down to it, some of them, you know, the first sign of trouble, they leave, you know? Many people, not it just people with sickle cell, other diseases, they can give you testimonies of these, these things, okay? But the Lord is not like that. The Lord is faithful. So we have to be faithful to him, okay? Now, go to Romans 15. All right? And Job went through hell, man. All right? And there's a reason why the Lord recorded it in the Bible for us to read. Okay? Romans 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning alright so all the things Old and New Testament that are in the Bible were written for our learning man okay you ain't gonna put it down on tablet stone papyrus paper all right, so people just don't read it. No, you know, and really, if you think about it, I'm not even thinking about it. All of this is for the elect's sake. And what did Apostle Paul say? I endure all things for the elect's sake. So this Bible really is for the elect, man. All right, and that's the 144,000. And then the rest of the elect, which is going to be that uh, innumerable multitude. Oh, it's just me. Can I have my um, painkiller, please? Um, the new is the innumerable multitude, which is in uh, Revelations. All right, all nations, kindreds, and tongues. That's our people scattered in all nations. All right. So really, this Bible is written just for us. That's a small number, man. That's why our ancestors said, "I oh, want the saints go marching in. I want to be in that number." All right. So the things we're going through, you have to remember that your house I went through all of these things as well. You know, he was a a a, a man that came on the earth. You know, and fulfilled his purpose. And I had that horrible, brutalizing death. Humiliated, scorned by the people that he was ultimately trying to save. You know, he was dying for this uh, a wicked nation, man. You know? So, whatsoever things are written for our learning. All right? That we, through patience, and the word patience means to suffer, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right? So, these scriptures give us hope. Hope for a better tomorrow, man. You know? That we ain't going to be in this same condition Permanently And Another great example Of that is Job You know Because he went through all th all those tribulations But what happened He kept fast his integrity Now let's look up that word integrity first Because that word integrity is a big word It's a very important word well, hmm. integrity. All right, integrity, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. All right. A quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. All right. Upholding territorial integrity. 
Oh well that's just nationhood But True integrity Is what Is the practice of being honest And showing a consistent And uncompromising Adherence to a strong Moral and ethical Principles and values Alright So the Lord said that Job Had integrity man And he did have integrity So he kept um, his morals and principles And he was uncompromising You know In his faith in the Lord No matter what the Lord put upon him Remember The Lord said Listen Satan You can have him Do what you want But just don't kill him Alright But what was the latter end of that Let's Let's go back And When I first came to his truth One of the first books I Actually uh, read From front to back Was the book of Job Because it, res it, 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 it resonated With me and my situation No word of a lie man You know And uh, the brother that You know My neighbour that I saw That left yesterday Same thing He mentioned it You know And that was the spirit So I thought You know I need to do a lesson, just just a little lesson on it, you know. Let's go to Job forty-two, verse ten. All right. So I remember Job kept his integrity in the Lord. All right. This is Job forty-two, verse ten, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So because he kept the faith and integrity, the Lord doubled. Everything that the Lord Job lost, he got double back. That was his reward. All right? And that's what we're going to have in the kingdom, man. So we have to keep fast our integrity in Yahweh, and his truth. You know? Uh, verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and, and his sisters... And all that he had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him and comforted and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. See, the Lord brought all the evil upon him. So who's brought all of this uh, pain and suffering that I, I'm going through on, on upon me? The Lord has. Okay? And if you're in that same situation, he's doing the same to you. Okay? That's the reality. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. You know? Now, verse 12. So the Lord blessed. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And that's what we're going to get. Alright. I'm just going to leave it at that. That's a beautiful message. Alright. So stay strong. Stay in the Lord. To the next one. Shalom.